Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I am taking Matt out on a test drive. I'm going to be taking him up against the Bahamut EX2 fight, which is, in my opinion, one of the harder fights in the game. Uh, Bahamut is just a super tough summon to fight in general, especially the EX2. That took me like over 100 tries. And today, my goal is to take Matt out into combat and to really test this ability, this new weapon, the Centipede. For those of you who haven't seen, I recently made a video, I think it was my last video, where I check the healing potency on this weapon. The banner suggests that it heals based off the healing potency of your teammates. However, I found that to be untrue. This weapon heals off of Matt's healing potency, making it even better than what we thought it was going to be when it first dropped. So today, my goal is to test this out against the EX1 fight. As you guys can see, it's only OB1. It has a healing potency of 50%, and the physical defense starts at mid on the AoE and stays at mid. So I'm going to be using this to, to block against the dive bombs, using Matt as my center healer in this fight. This isn't a guide video for the EX1 Bahamut fight, but for those of you who haven't cleared it yet, this might help you with better understanding the mechanics of the fight and how I'm going about getting into it. Cloud is going to be a Thunder God build and using the Bandage Sword to raise the AoE magic defense of the team. Tifa is a non-elemental build using the Tiger Fangs to lower the magic attack of Bahamut. And Matt is going to be my main physical defense buffer and healer in the fight. Um, all right, so let's go quickly into the builds and then let's get into that fight, all right? So I'm going to go through the materia first, as I normally do. In the first slot, we have a D-Faith on Tifa, a D-Brave on Cloud, and just a regular sigil break on Matt just for the uh, stat stick on it. In the middle slot, I just have stat sticks for all three of them. So I have a Fyra on Matt, an Aurora Blow on Cloud, and a Thundara Blow on Tifa. And then in the third slot, I have three Kuras, um, each tailored to the stats that they need. So Clouds has the highest physical attack, Tifa has the second highest physical attack, and Matt's is catered to healing. Um, on their front end builds with Tifa, I'm running Amaranth's Guys, the Somersault Limit Break, which is super important in this fight. You can use it to interrupt his countdowns or basically any of his attacks, and it charges really fast. I have the Amaranth's Claws at OB9 and the Tiger Fangs. On Matt over here, I have the Killer Hornet. Um, I know this is physical attack up, and this build essentially calls for magic, but I like this costume because it has HP on it, and so that's why I'm running it. Also, we have the Gigantic Shield, which is a fantastic limit break. If you run out of ATB and you need some things, I save this for like those dire situations. Other than that, we have the Centipede right here, the Showcase of the Centipede, and then I have uh, the Bahamut Rapier for the Ruin Resurge++, plus plus, which I'm going to use to break Bahamut Sigils partially through the fight. Last but not least, we have Cloud in the Battle Garb, Murasame first slot, Bandage Sword second slot, and then Judgment Bolt in the rear end. Alright, so looking at the overall stats here, Tifa's sitting at 10k HP, 3.2k physical attack. She's got 118 defense, 107 magic defense. Her R abilities are shown here. Her sub-equipments are the Dark Heavens, Black Whiskers, and the Aonibi. Alright, moving over to Matt. He's sitting at 7.4k HP. This is going to barely let him survive the dive bombs as long as Bahamut has one uh, debuff to his physical attack, and we have the two-tier physical defense buff up on the team. So he should survive with like a few hundred HP each time. Um, so he's got 7.4k HP, 1700 physical attack, 1700 magic attack, 119 physical defense, and 145 magic defense, but then a whopping 2.3k healing, which is fantastic. These are his R abilities if you guys want to check it out, and his sub-equipments are right here, the Hell House Caller, Fairy Tail, and the Chocobo Staff. Last but not least, we have Cloud Strife himself, 94k power, 10.5k HP, almost 3k physical attack, 124 physical defense, 121 magic defense. We have his R abilities right here as shown. I'll bring those up for you guys to check out. And then going over to his sub-equips, I have the Crystal Gloves, the Broadsword Axis, and the Seaside Collar, which is going to give him a lightning potency of 8, which is fantastic. All right, guys, so that is going to be the build. Today, I'm just going into this purely for fun. All right, guys, here we are going into one of my favorite fights in the game, the EX-1 Bahamut fight. It's not quite as infuriating as the EX-2, but it's still fun. All right, so right off the bat, he's going to debuff everybody. 
And what I'm going to do is immediately start switching back and forth between Cloud and Tifa. And they are just going to raise magical defense and lower magical attack back to back to back. You should be able to get off three casts of each the whole time. Hopefully. Um, normally we can get three sanctuaries. The, the Tiger Fangs hit on Tifa at the end is tricky. But hopefully we can get it right here. Oh, I think we barely didn't get it. Alright, but I think we'll survive this. And throughout this fight, I'm going to show you guys a couple of tricks that I've learned um, that help me in the game. Alright, we're going to get this heal off right here. And just go rolling straight back into the uh, DPS. Alright, here we go. So Matt's looking to do a pretty damn good job healing. Um, especially with such a low OB level weapon. But it does work, and and I, as long as it works, I'm good with it. So we can slowly raise the OB level of it over time, and it's just going to get better and better, which I love. All right, there's the four. So one of the frustrating things about the manual combat in this is that when you choose a character like this, it pans away from the boss while he's doing a countdown, right? That can be really frustrating, because then you can miss changing over the defense stance. But I'm going to show you guys one little trick that I've learned how to get out of that. So as soon as you click to a character and start to attack, if it pans the camera away, you can just switch to another character and boom, you're free of it. Because they still have the um, perspective of uh, looking at it from head on. So that's one of the little tricks that I've learned in this game that helps me out a lot. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know that, but if you don't, uh, it's definitely super helpful. Alright, so I'm going to get a heal in right here. There we go. I'll throw one Sanctuary just to give us some magic defense up. And we'll block this. Alright, I'll throw a heal in right here. One thing that I've noticed about Centipede that I'm not super fond of is the fact that you know, with most healers, if I want them to heal, but I'm not actually on that character. So, for example, like, if I'm on Tifa right here and I click blue stance, Matt should cast a heal, right? But if you have a Cura equipped, like he just did, he's not going to cast the Centipede ability. He's always going to cast the Cura, which is pretty annoying, which means you have to be targeting. You have to be on Matt in order to make him do it. Which is a little frustrating because it is a buff, it is a heal. He should be prioritizing it, in my opinion. But it is what it is. I guess we can always test if we um, take off the Cura on Matt. If he has no single target Cure, maybe he'll cast it. Um, but as far as right now, I haven't I haven't tested that. So I'll keep you guys posted on a on a different video. All right, so there goes the Mega Flare Bar. Straight back to attacking. Let's go. Ooh, it's still counting down, actually. Alrighty. I'm going to save that uh, Gigantic Shield, as his Sigil Break can be a little bit annoying to break. Alright, and we're just going to do the same thing we did with Mega Flare at the beginning. We're just going to Triple Cast Sanctuary and Tiger Fangs. And hopefully we'll get all of them off right here. I know we'll get off three sanctuaries. Now the tiger fangs are close. Oh, it looks like we are going to get that. Heck yeah. All right, so we're in good standing right here. This mega flare is basically debuffed and we're buffed up. So we should survive it. There we go. A little bit low on the ATB here. So I might have to interrupt this dude. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, it looks like he's going into Unity Aura right here. I'm going to start healing up. It is targeting Matt. So we're going to debrave Bahamut twice. And I need to get everyone to... I need to get Matt to full HP or else this is going to kill him. And get off the recovery circle right there. Boom, he should be good. Alright, 
Here comes the first dive bomb. I told you, he's going to barely survive it. Alright, hopefully Tifa can get off a heal right now on Matt. And hopefully Bahamut doesn't target Matt one more time. I'm going to somersault in here just to give us a little bit more time on the healing. Because if he does target Matt, he's only at half health right now. And our ATB has taken a little bit of a hit. Alright, so here comes the Thunderstrike. I'm going to cure on Matt. And cure Matt with teeth. Oh no, he's full health. Alright, so it looks like he is targeting Matt. I am going to recovery circle. Debrave right about now. And we should get one more recovery circle in. Hopefully, it's going to be close. His cast time is a little bit longer than Barrett's, just so you guys know. Barrett's is really fast. All right, perfect. So we did get that off. That's pretty sweet. All right, it does not look like with our ATV right here, we are going to break this. So I need to get um, Matt healed to full. Okay, and then we're going to use his limit break right here. All right. Let's see on Matt, and boom, we'll get off the gigantic shield. Hopefully Matt can survive this. It's going to be tough, I'm not going to lie. The fact that he targeted Matt for all three hits is like asshole-ish. <laughs> this dude, it can be so annoying with the RNG in this fight. All right, oh, come on, come on, come on. Oh, thank God. That was so close. Two close for comfort oh that was also too close for comfort he's definitely targeting matt right there he's trying to kill him right now all right so i interrupted that with ramu and hopefully this heal gets off oh what a bastard it's all right i'm gonna try and burn this dude down right now hopefully we can do this without matt at the end he needed a little bit more physical defense in this fight, but I think that we're going to be fine from this point. If not, it's going to be a tough fight, but we're just going to try and burn through to the end. All right, let's see here. I'm going to try and interrupt his attack with Somersault. There it is. I think we're in like the last rundown on the Mega Flares right here, so I think we should be able to just DPS check run this dude down. Hopefully. Hopefully, that is. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to see how this goes. But I think that if I would have put just a little bit more HP on Matt, he would have been fine. Um, also, sa saving ATB in those dive bombs or saving ATB going into those dive bombs definitely makes that part of the fight easier. All right, here we go. He's just charging, so I'm not worried about that attack up buff that he has right there. Oh, there it is, actually. Super annoying. I'm still going to go for the attacking, though. All right, here we go. Here comes the next. All right, I'm just gonna try and survive this as long as I can. All right, I'm gonna interrupt that with the somersault. This is definitely a little bit on the wire right here. But this is my favorite part about this game is getting to these points. All right, there goes the dark aura. He's probably gonna start charging. So yeah, here it is. Hopefully Tifa will get her somersault at least one more time. That'll give us an extra number on the count. But we're just trying to do as much damage here as possible. Unfortunately for Matt's showcase on his centipede, he fell. But not due to his ability to heal. <laughs> Alright, here we go. That's the four. We're down to the A. Alright, so we're looking pretty good because I'm pretty sure Tifa's about to get her somersault on this one right now. Alright. And that means I can interrupt it and then go with uh, Ramu right here. So let's see if we get it. There it is. And at this point, we basically got it in the bag. Bahamut's not going to do any more attacks. We've interrupted him. He doesn't have enough time to cast Mega Flare. And he's about to die. So, sorry Bahamut. But we're going to take the win one more time. So there you guys have it. My, I'd say... Centipede overall is a fantastic weapon. Um, I think for what it is, it's really good. And I, I loved it because, you know, for me, like in my account, 
if I wanted to have like the strongest account, I had the crystals to pull for Tifa's guy gloves. I could have for sure got them OB6. But I like to play different characters in this game. I don't want to always be doing the same characters to do uh, the same thing. So like Tifa, I pulled the Emron's Claws. I did the physical non-elemental damage thing with her. I know that she becomes like a goddess when it comes to getting those guide gloves. And, you know, I got no gripes with anyone who went to the pull for it. I totally understand. It's badass and the cowgirl costume is so sick. Um, but other than that, I... I haven't been able to really use Zack very much, and the fact that Matt's weapon was on there and it did what it did uh, was really appealing to me. So I decided to pull it. My one gripe with the Centipede is what I was saying. If you if you have it equipped and you are on a different character and you switch over to the blue stance, if you have a Cure or a Cura on him, he's going to cast that. Even if you need an AoE heal, he's still going to do the single target heal. Which is kind of annoying. It's nice in really hard fights to be able to have the healer do what you want to do, even if you're on a different character. So I'd say that's like the main weakness of Centipede. Um, now, whether or not it changes based on... Actually, you know what? Let's check really quick. We're going to check to see if he auto-casts it without a cure spell attached. I know this video has already been a little bit long, but we're already here. And if you guys are still listening to this video, at least we will know. I'm just going to go into this fight right here. It's going to take two seconds to figure this out. And we will know if you want him to auto cast the centipede ability, you might have to remove his single target cure, which has its pros and cons, right? All right, so I'm going to go to Tifa. And I'm going to switch to the blue right here. And we're going to see. Okay, so there you have it. He does cast it. All right. Now he is casting Dive Bomb right there, which is a physical attack. So that might have affected it. But I'm guessing if you're in the blue stance and he only has one thing that's defensive in his kit, he's probably going to cast it. So yeah, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Just so you guys know, I have a brand new book dropping tomorrow worldwide fade to black the curseborn saga book one it is a third edition remaster of a series i've been working on for 10 years with my brother and my two best friends that i met working at a GameStop when i was in high school and all in all i'm super excited this book series has had two prior editions published this is the third one the official remaster there's going to be five novels publishing this year leading up to the never before released uh, uh, launch of the graph arc which is the third arc in the series um, I just put out a video called introduction to the world of curseborn where it talks about our lore the gods the goddess of life the god of death time and the saurian race which are the people who protect lady Vale, the goddess of life from death himself in the story they live on these two floating countries in the sky. The Saurians are half god with the blood of dragons. In their lore, night and day are two dragons that forever encircle the cosmos. And, you know, the introduction to the world of Curseborn talks a lot about the lore, the Aether Ring, the old gods, and essentially the setup genesis for the entire story as a whole. Um, but then the books themselves follow two swordsman brothers who live on one of these floating countries in the sky and their adventures across those those worlds so yeah it's a really fun series we've done book signings at comic-con anime expo salt lake city fan x a bunch of these things so if you guys like fantasy if you like to read i think it might be something worth trying that being said if you like this video today drop a like sub to the channel i always appreciate it i hope you all have a wonderful day take care and peace